Christ. We beheld his glory full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh and he died for me and you. To those who receive him, believing on his name, being raised to life, he will grant them the same. Cause he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he is the Lord, he is the word, he is the light. Yeah, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, and he is the Lord, he is the word, he is the light. Thank you. Now this last one, if you're so inclined, I'd like you to sing it with me as we all stand, if you would. If you don't know the words, they're pretty much word for word from Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. I'll give you five seconds to look it up. But you're gonna, most of you are going to recognize this anyway. And if you don't, it's real easy to pick up on. I thought we might make sure that we are in a spirit of worship before the word is given this morning. And this song is called... Search me, O oh God. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me, O oh Lord. See if there be any wicked way in me, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting, and lead me in the way. the whole song. Let's sing that one more time. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me, O oh Lord, and know my thoughts. And see Would you come pray for us before the sermon starts? You can sit or stand. That's entirely up to you. Whenever you're ready. Father God, Lord, 
Thank you, Commander Staylord. Thank you so much for all the great little things you give us, God, and for just blessing this church, Lord, and all of us in here, Lord. And just help us have a great week, Lord, and help us stay away from evil in our hearts, Lord, and just follow you, Lord, completely, God. And just help us make us through this week, Lord, and just help us always speak of you, Lord, and show your light to this dark world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, church. You may be seated. A few weeks ago, I got a message on Facebook from a young man that went to the academy here nearly 28 years ago. It's hard to believe it's been around that long. And he said, good morning, Dave. I just thought I'd share a quick message of positivity and gratitude. I've been a full-time piano player at Jonesboro Baptist for some time now. And I feel like that's where God wants me right now. This past Sunday, another student from here, Lewis Widener, was our preacher because our pastor was on a much needed vacation. Lewis didn't remember me from the early years at Fellowship Christian Academy, Academy, but he quickly remembered once we started talking and we had a nice conversation of how even 20 some years ago, this school was shaping people into ministry, even though I'm not sure any of us knew it at that time. He did a great job and a great message. And he said, hope you have a great day today. That made my day to see two, two young men that were here, they started here 28 years ago, are still serving God today. Amen. Folks, what it's about is investing in people's lives. That's what church, a big part of church. Having said that, I'm going to ask you, Josh Jernell, Brandy Lone, Tabitha Knuckles, Shannon Combs, Heather Allen, Shane Phelps, and Ashley Witt will come down and have a seat on the front row. I, 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 there's three that are, could not make it today, and that, that is why um, I didn't call their name. I, I don't think they're here. They're mighty quiet if they are. Okay, all right. Oh, Mary, there you are. Mary, get down here. Lord, I looked everywhere for you, but you're just too quiet. Come on down here. Mary Wright, all right. Oh, wait. <laughs> she must have all right today we're going to ordain and commission a number of people that have been called of God to serve him why so many in a little church I know some of y'all think of that why I go to a church that's got 400 people in it and they got one deacon you're in trouble. Amen. I'll tell you why so many. A man of God, and I don't use that term loosely. Beware of people that brag that that's what they are. But I'm calling this man a man of God because I know him. He called me several weeks ago when Donna and I were in North Carolina. And he said he had been fasting and praying that God showed him something huge was coming and we needed to prepare for it. It wasn't a natural disaster, not even an election, but something particularly aimed at our assembly. So what we are doing is obeying and preparing for God's calling and what he's going to do. This has lately become not a small ministry any longer, but a huge deal. The stuff that our church is getting involved in, we're, we're not supposed to be doing it. We don't have any money. We don't really have any resources, but for some weird reason, they keep pouring in. And we need more and more people to do these jobs that God has given us. I've never seen something so overwhelming as I have in the last few months. And our ministry keeps getting bigger and bigger. I want you to understand 
that there is no such thing as a small church with God. If you're doing his work, that's big business, okay? Just remember that. So we're preparing to obey him. Now, these folks down here, you might think are ordinary people as far as the world is concerned, but not ordinary in God's economy. These are all people who have walked through the fire and came out victorious, and they're getting ready to walk right back in again because they got to retrieve some folks that are still there. I just look at all these, and I'm not going to read y'all's testimonies because it wouldn't take but one paragraph to tell who you were. <laughs> but my goodness, it just tore me up. To see what God pulled you out of. And what you have been through over the years. And everybody in here just about said, I'm not the same that I used to be. Yes, absolutely. Not the same that I used to be. And let me tell you something. You start serving God, you will never be the same. It will scare you to death. But it's great. There's nothing that compares to serving God. Paul was chosen by God to be a fire walker too. Listen to what he said in 2 Corinthians 11. He said, of the Jews, five times I received 39 stripes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. That means they threw rocks at him for all of you that are not familiar. <laughs> We are in Madison Heights, by the way. <laughs> Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of water, perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in the wilderness, and in the sea, and among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, and in watchings often, hunger and thirst, fastings, cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forever, knows that I do not lie. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas the king kept the city of the uh, Damascenes with a garrison desiring to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket, I was let down by the wall and escaped his hands. One thing right after another. Just about everybody that serves in this church has been through some kind of awful upheaval. Some of y'all should be dead right now and long since buried. Some of you are in constant pain all day long from things that happened to you that were out of your control, but you're still chugging. Some of you were told you were going to die of cancer. Some of you were told you were going to die of MS. Some of you were told you were going to die of this and die of that, but yet here you sit. Here you sit. I'm going to give you an example of how things happen. On, on January the 6th, which is going to be our Founders Day, we're, we're going to call this the House of Miracles, and we're going to share miracles that day. Now, this girl right here went Thursday morning to get a heart ablation, and that sounds real benign. But what they do is they run a wire up through your leg, up into your heart, and they look at it on a TV. Yeah. Big TV. A big TV. <laughs> it would have to be a real big TV for me. And they look and if they see anything that needs to be fixed in your heart, they shoot a laser beam and burn it. And then pull that bad boy back out after a while. Well, I was on pins and needles yelling at the devil in the waiting room. 
And the doctor called me and said, everything is great. She will bring her down from recovery, but she'll be out. Well, they wheeled her into the little room where I was waiting for her, and the nurse said, well, you know, she'll be out for a while. 30 seconds later, her eyes sprung open. She started, started talking, which that's not a stretch for her, okay? Anyway. That's true. And she wasn't able to, hold on, I ain't done yet. Oh, no, 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 I ain't done yet. And she, you know, she, she couldn't move for about three minutes. Then she sat up on the bed. And then she said, well, I'm going to the bathroom. And so the nurse helped her, and she could barely walk. Well, a couple of minutes later, she walked back out by on her own steam and sat down in a chair instead of went back to bed. And we talked for about 20 minutes, and she said, let's get out of here. Please. I make the joke that she's tougher than a $2 steak. But there are a bunch of y'all in here that are all part of the $2 steak club. And that's going to be our, our big brag, is most of our people in here that serve God are members of the $2 steak club. And I can, I can go one story after another right down the line, thank you, darling, and share that. That's the kind of people that God likes to use, that knows they can't do anything without him. Well, why these again, you might ask again? We need these kind of people. God needs them too because they can relate to the ones coming into our assembly. And they're coming that are scarred, that are hurting, that have questions about God and how to live for him. There are people coming in all the time that are seeking God. And I hope they run right into these folks right here. Let's listen to Paul one more time in 2 Corinthians 1. He says this, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy our brother to the church of God which is at Corinth with all the saints. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen carefully. This is why we are here. This is why we serve. This is why God calls us and listen carefully. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation. Why? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we are comforted of God. In other words, you use your trials that you have been through to pray for others in here that are going through one that or maybe coming out of one and need your help or getting ready to go in one. If anybody's sitting in here and you're not in a trial right now, be patient, it's coming. Everybody's going to have a trial and a tribulation, but the reason, one of the big reasons for church is you can go in and find people that have been there and will pray with you and hug your neck. That's part of what we do. And he said, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so does the consolation also. Whether we be afflicted, it's for your cons consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the endurings of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Here's a stack of personal testimonies of each of those wishing to be ordained or commissioned depending on to what office to serve in this assembly. And each and every one of them have a unique testimony in the background that you can use for the glory of God despite your baggage and your struggles. We're like an airplane. You can bring your baggage on board here. It's all right. Bring it on in here. God will take care of that. Don't ever feel like you've got to, and it makes me cringe every time I hear somebody say this, Dave, I'm going to get myself straight and I'll come to church. Oh, you won't. You will go to hell trying to get yourself straight. You can't do that. If you could, you wouldn't need to be here. 
You let God do it. Ephesians 4.1 tells us, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. God has called each person to do something for him. And Paul said to the church at Ephesus, walk worthy of it. Why? Because everybody's eyes are on you. By accepting what you are accepting today, more people will be watching you like a hawk. That's scary, isn't it? I tell people, though, you watch me long enough, you'll get disappointed because I'm fallible, and so are they. But the fact remains, people are watching to see what we're going to do with this new found job we have. This calling. Romans eleven twenty nine says the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Did you know he don't take it back? When he calls you to do something, that's forever. You, you can't say, well, he, he's not calling me anymore. Well, he never called you to start with. If he don't call you anymore, if he don't, if, if you try walking away from God, and serving God and he don't bug you and he don't make you feel miserable until you get back doing it and you won't ever call to him to start with. And some of them do slip through the cracks from time to time. He said, let every man live in the same calling wherein he was called. And wherefore, my brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, who is Jesus Christ. That's who we need to keep our eyes on, is Jesus. Because he's the only one that was perfect. He has never let anybody down, even though we all will let you down. Like if we tried at it hard, hard, try hard at it long enough, it's going to happen. But you got to remember, we're fallible humans. We need Jesus too. 2 Peter 1.10, Wherefore, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. And listen to this. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. That's cool. You, you serve God and you're not going to fall. You keep your eyes on Him and walk with Him and this will work out great. I will warn you. You keep serving him and keep walking with him and he will give you more and even greater things to do. Amen. Things you would have never imagined that you will get to do for him. I, don't ever, please, please don't ever look at this as a chore or that you're getting dragged into it. I want you to understand what an honor and a privilege that the king of the universe is asking you to do these things. You are his ambassadors. You are speaking for him when you talk to other people. You are representing him and he asks you to do it. He could have done that with anybody, but, he, but you are the ones being asked. Then he says in 1 Corinthians 1.26, For you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men after the flesh and not many mighty or noble are called. He doesn't call a lot of people that the world looks at as a celebrity or a wise man or something special because you know why they think they're something special. As long as you think you're doing God a favor by serving him, there's not a thing in the world he can do with you. That's all the reward you're going to get. But it's those who know they're not worthy, who wonder why God would bother to use them to start with. Those are the ones that God really can use. And I want you not to ever look at your circumstances, your, your education, your health, your money, your resources. You just be available. He take care of the rest of that. He will see you through. Second Thessalonians Again, 111, wherefore also we pray always for you that God would count you worthy of his, this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power.
pray for the folks that are being commissioned and ordained today. Pray for them every day. I know people praying for me. They, they tell me, but I can feel it because I couldn't do it if they didn't. You've got to have the prayers of the saints to be able to hold up and to do the things that God has called you to do. Our church is getting ready. Well, it's already doing it, making some huge leaps to reach out to people in other cities and other states and even locally here to do things for God that we're, we can't do, but we're going to do it anyway. People have told us, you know, why y'all bothering to do that? I hear that. You, you, some of y'all ever hear that? Why y'all bothering to do that? I tell them, try it. You'll understand. Get involved. You'll understand why. Don't be somebody on the outside looking in. Be a team player. Be part of that. Absolutely. And God will, God will instruct you. I, I kid you not. He hasn't stopped talking to people. He will speak to your heart daily and show you opportunities and open doors for you to do things. And he will give you directions if you will stop and listen. And I want you, again, to understand what a big, big deal this is. When I got ordained in the, I don't even remember when it was, the early 90s. I was licensed in the 80s. I'm not going to tell you an old man buy cracky story. I'm not going to do that. I was ordained in a little mission church in Buena Vista. It was a church that was started by a prison chaplain for people that were getting out of jail and didn't know anything about church. And so we were going to work with them and teach them what church was all about. We had some really great worship services. As a matter of fact, on Sunday morning, a local sheriff, now this, this is crazy, but he did, would stop off at his jail, take a set of keys, and let inmates out and fill his car up and bring them to church while they were in jail. And that, I've never seen that ever before, but that was really cool. But I was ordained in that church, and there were two uh, very popular prison chaplains. I had a Southern Baptist, mm -hmm. an Independent Baptist, a Church of God, and a Methodist yes. pastor. In my condition, I couldn't afford to offend anybody. I, we couldn't afford the rabbi, so we just had to go on with it, you know, <laughs> seriously. They all were part of my ordination. And I'll never forget it. They, the church was so poor that they just gave me a standard Bible that they gave to everybody else as a gift for my ordination. But I'll never forget it. It changed my life. And I've never been the same since that day. What you are receiving this morning is so important because this local church is putting its seal of approval on each of you for the job that you are being commissioned or ordained to do. And so consider that a huge compliment and a huge deal. And always look at this as a special highlight in your life. So having said that at this time, I'm going to ask if all ordained personnel would start, would come down here and we're going to lay hands on all of these folks as we walk by and pray over each and every one of them. And then we're going to present the certificates afterwards. So y'all just come right on down this end.